Howdy y'all, I got the Bulldog on the channel. I didn't do much during the heat of the day, so it's dark outside and I'm working. It's still humid, but it's not hot, but it's still humid. What we got right here is a 2015 Volkswagen Tig, 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 uh, it's a 2015 Volkswagen sports minivan and it presented just check engine light has some running problems uh, I threw the little magic box on it we had four different codes we had intake manifold runner control implausible signal we had uh, engine RPM too high or uncontrollable we had uh, uh, cam sensor, implausible signal, or something along those lines, and then EVAT small leak. So I noted those codes. I cleared them all out. I took it out for test drive. The only code that came back was the manifold runner control, implausible signal. Now, uh, I jumped ahead with my you know, explanation there. The first thing I did before I cleared the codes was check out some stuff. I didn't see any wires that were pinched or chewed on by mice because everybody out here, you know, we, we were out there in the boonies uh, where every once in a while you can hear a banjo playing. But rodents are a problem always. So I looked at that first. What had me concerned was the engine RPM uncontrollable or above expected RPM, something along those lines. I forgot what the code actually said, but it was saying that it couldn't idle it down. That can be a sign of a vacuum leak. Well, I looked at this thing and identified where the uh, runner control is and it is vacuum operated. So actually the first thing that I did was while the engine was running, I pulled off the vacuum supply to the runner control. I was li for, I listened for vacuum leaks. There were none that I could hear. I pulled the intake runner control supply vacuum off, checked it. I had vacuum. Okay, we got vacuum. So then I shut that off. I shut the engine off. I go into my testing system and I pulled the control off of the runner control reached back there moved the runner control physically it was not stuck i pulled a vacuum on it it worked like it should and then i went into my actuator test i don't have a good actuator test on the on this one it just tests all the actuators and you got to cycle through during the test to get to the one you want but there actually is a test in there and it just turns it on and off Click, 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 click. Well, I pulled a vacuum on it. It is clicking. It is actually turning on and off and holding. I blew air through it and pulled a vacuum because every once in a while you get one that it'll hold pressure, but it won't hold vacuum, which is supposed to hold vacuum. Everything worked as it should. I have on the, the PID, the, the data stream, I have no signal on the intake runner control so uh, the sensor so the sensor is probably bad it's on the other end of the intake you see here here's the solenoid down here here's the diaphragm control for the runner that hooks up down there so on the other end of this see here eh, there that thing right there I, I believe is what it is that's the runner control uh, sensor that tells the computer where that runner control is and if that sensor is not functioning properly then it throws that code now I'll get a little bit more information because it had other codes in it I'd like to know if the signal for that sensor is on the same signal line as like the cam sensor or the TPS or stuff like that but the only code that came back was the runner control so we're gonna 
for now, assume that that's the actual problem. And that she did, when she first had the problem, she had somebody go check it for free. And that was the only code that was in it, was that runner control code. Everything else developed while she was waiting for me to get, get to it to check it. Uh, we'll see. When I looked it up online, it looked like, you know, a lot of people had that sensor in stock. So hopefully that's all it's gonna, that we're going to do. But I figured I'd pop on here and let you know this is what I'm doing. And that's a good diagnostic method whenever you're dealing with something. Just it's quick. And I know anybody that's dealt with this before is probably saying right off the bat at the first of the video, you're looking at the wrong end. It's always the sensor. Yeah, but it was five minutes to check out that other one. Well, about 10 minutes because I had to go find a vacuum line and put it on. Anyway, I wanted to ensure that the control side of it was good before I went looking at the sensor side. So that's just how we do things, you know, kind of looking, looking for what's going on, making sure... We got our ducks in a row because every once in a while they throw a squirrel in there. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell notification, share it all around. We'll talk to you later.